Hey guys, I always thought that Anthony would make a really good detective. And it's almost like catch me if you can. If you see that have you seen that movie with Leonardo DiCaprio? I believe also Tom Hanks. It's a really interesting movie at the end of the deal. The FBI offer the Leonardo DiCaprio character who's running around and pretending that he's bankers, uh, he can airplane pilot professors. He was really good at cheating and lying and stealing and one of his best things was cashing checks that weren't real. He could easily detect if something was not real. Well, for Anthony, he detects something is shady with this business and I think he may be right because it is a business that bought a quarter million dollar watch for $130,000 and immediately put in leads which is a database, but like Anthony said, it's not a database that everyone uses. So then once they get the okay from leads, they can go ahead and sell it for 50%, 100% margins, something like that, right? So in theory, this is a very, very profitable business if you are fencing stolen goods and the stolen goods for whatever reason cannot be reported. I was watching a Netflix documentary and it was about uh, individuals in the, I think in the 1960s and um, crimes against gay people were not reported very often because people didn't want to come out as gay, right? So it's kind of like, oh, you, you were hanging out with this gay guy who's a prostitute. Why were you hanging out with him? Were you gay? And then they would ruin their reputations Therefore, uh, a lot of crimes, a lot of stolen items were never ever reported and they were just sold off and pawned off and no questions were asked as to the where did he get it. So this is a legit jeweler store. Of course, Kevin, they, they do have some information. They have Kevin's name, his uh, driver's license, probably his address. And but to lowball somebody that low on such a expensive item, I'm really that does and to buy a, a a richer mill without box and papers and then you know the response would go you bought it without box and papers yes but that's because anthony is a shady guy so let's imagine that you are a new person you have a quarter million dollar watch you take it to the jeweler store and they offer you one hundred thirty thousand. and you say yep there's no box and papers there's no authentication. The deal is done right there on the spot and you get your money. That seems like really weird. I, I cannot imagine that's how the gray watch market works. And they know that they're holding the watch. So the watch is not on the website, but the watch is held. But they're also text messaging at least Bob, if not more people that, hey, we have this watch available for sale. So there's got to be some weird things are happening with this shop too that I think Anthony immediately... So again, Anthony is not the most eloquent individual. He has very limited education. I don't know if he graduated high school, but he definitely didn't go to college. Uh, I had that argument with Anthony myself about college education and the value of college education. I'm not going to have that again on YouTube. But there is a interesting uh, story to tell because I think he realizes something is wrong right would you buy a watch why would you buy, spend a hundred and thirty thousand dollars the watch has no papers it's scratched up how do you even know it's a richer mill right how do you even know that watch is a richer mill I'm not positive how this store decides to buy the richer mill Maybe Kevin has sold items before to them. Um, there's got to be some type of relationship the store has with Kevin. And they're straight okay with uh, snitching on Kevin. There's Kevin. There's all the information. After he looks at that and immediately he doesn't take a copy of it. He doesn't take a photo of it. He doesn't get revenge on Kevin and say, oh man, Kevin is, he's the guy. Um... I do feel that overall it is a fascinating tale and there's probably a lot of things we can learn about the gray watch market and the interaction. So nothing against this store. It just seems weird to me 
given the amount of money involved, they would take a risk on such a sketchy item. Like at the end of the day, it's a sketchy item. If someone wants to sell you a $250,000 watch for half off, no papers, no box, and it's scratched and dinged in a unique way, you just take the item. Like, what, Number one, wouldn't you think it would be a fake Richard Mill? And how would you even verify it's real? Like, I'm sure that maybe they have a watchmaker on staff, but how many Richard Mills theoretically does this watchmaker know? And and uh, even even for Kevin to give his information up, to give his name up, and Anthony immediately recognizes this Kevin uh, is kind of strange. Like, where? So, just like other stuff in Anthony's life, I do think he's onto something. Like the Italian couple. I was one of the most vocal people saying, oh my God, he just stole somebody's real watch. I thought it was real. Anthony at one point thought it was real, then it was fake, then it was real again, then it was fake again. Like, he knew something was up, and he knew the price, and a lot of times the price is too good to be true. The Italian couple was willing to let go of the watch for 70%. Here, a dude is willing to let go of a richer mill. And they got the watch in possession. They put it in leads. It was waiting. And they were still off. Even during the waiting time, they were offering to Bob. And that's how Anthony figured out where the, his watch was. I truly do believe it's Anthony's watch. Of course, I don't think there's a doubt, you know, whether or not that's Anthony's watch. Was it stolen? Was it sold? Um, the, also, the story about him offering hundreds of thousands of dollars to the bartender and a bar owner to look at video and see who interacted well here you have a very easy thing is kevin at the bar right like you got a picture of the dude you go back to look at the videotape and you see if kevin was at the bar did he pass by you did he hand you a drink were you hanging out with kevin it does remind me of that netflix show where uh gay crime was very very high uh, and people would steal like gold coins and watches and have them pawned off because uh, it was never reported. Um, people wouldn't report the crime because they were afraid of the, you know, they were business leaders, sometimes religious leaders, right? And they didn't want to come out as gay. Um, maybe it has something to do with this uh, for Anthony's side. Uh, that's the only explanation I can kind of get uh, to is... Maybe it was, you know, Anthony was spending time with a dude and he gifted him this watch and maybe he was a little drunk. He got plastered. You know, he was very, very stressed at the time. And then the watch was given to the guy and the guy didn't know. He wasn't really. In, obviously, he was not interested in watches, right? He, he probably was like, what, 130 Is that $130? Man, I'll pass. No, no, $130,000. Like a Richard Mill, honestly, from like a non-watch person, I own one watch. Um, it's kind of like, it's like a Play-Doh watch almost. It's very gaudy, very big. You wouldn't, I mean, again, obviously this watch company knows what it is, right? They offered money to try to flip it. Hi guys, 